All right, today I'm going to work through this migrating view 2 code, um, and it's really the view 2 CLI. Um, we're going to take the code. The code won't change. We're going to migrate the code from the CLI2 structure and config to the CLI3, and this will change the build process a little bit. Uh, certainly changes it under the covers, and it should alleviate some of the problems that you might be seeing if you're um, looking at some of the code you created using Vue CLI2. For example, let's take a look at the 4000 code. This is on web development. If I look at caching data, I can see that I've got a potential security problem. I can still run this code, but there could be a point at which uh, GitHub IO would say, uh, I'm just not comfortable running that, and then you won't be able to run your code. So it's good to do this upgrade. It will clear this up for sure. So let's step through and see what we need to do. First of all, we want to upgrade nodes. So um, let's just get this going. Let's, let's just clear this out. And we're just going to run these, uh, just run these upgrades. So this is going to be the, the global install of node, which will um, update node and NPM to the latest version. And that can take a little bit. So let's say I'm at node version. I always test my versions after I upgrade. Node and NPM travel together. So I've got the latest versions there. And then um, sometimes on a Mac, you need to use a sudo, depending on if you're using brew or not. Um, and then we checked our versions. Now we're going to upgrade the Vue CLI. So right now, if I look at Vue dash dash version, and again, Vue, it's not the Vue code itself that's changing, but the, C, the, the way it's built, and that is what this reflects. So I'm currently at 2.96. And this is a global install, which means it's going into my, I'll show you where that's located. So where, which view, it shows me that my view code for this is kept in npm packages view install. And I believe that if I already have it, I need to uninstall it. So I want to run this npm uninstall of the view before I run the, the updated to run to get the updated view. So we'll do that. And then we look at which view, we look at view version, and we don't have view, we just uninstalled it. So now we can do the updated install, and it's a little different, it's the at view CLI. It's a little different than what you did if you installed the view too back when it came out. So we'll do the global install there. And this could take a couple of minutes to run. All right, so it's installed, and now if I do the where, the which view, it puts it back in the same place, but the version is 3.3, .3, so that's where I want to be. Um, this is just a note that the ch they've changed the package JSON script, so you'll see that when we look at package JSON, but you, to run the dev, it's now npm run serve instead of npm run dev, but to run the build, it's still npm run build. We'll get to that. So the first thing I want to do is to branch my existing code. So what I want to do is I have this um, 4,000 caching data that I want to fix. It's got a master branch. I happen to have already done this on a branch CLI3, but I'm going to do it again for the purposes of this video in a different branch. So I'll create a new branch. But the first step to branching is I'm going to clone it with SSH. So let's go back here. I'm here in a, in, let's see, I want to go to my temp directory. So I'm in a temp, temp directory, because I might, I don't need to keep this around really once I've got this um, 
corrected, you know, migrated, and then merged back into master. So I'm going to do a get clone on this branch and cd into there, watts 4000, and um, open this up in code. I like to work in VS Code here. I can pull open a, a local terminal. So here I am in this caching data. Uh, it should be the master branch. And I am going to create a new branch. And so my new branch is going to be called um, get, uh, I think I'll call it, uh, here I've called it CLI3, but since I already have that that I did just for testing before, I'm going to just call it CLI3 update. So we'll create a branch. And uh, what this command will do is it's actually doing two things. It's creating the branch with the dash V. And it's also checking it out locally. So those could be two steps, you know, um, get branch and then get checkout. But get checkout dash B creates a new branch. And you can see it's already switched to it. So if I do a get status now, I am in this CLI3 upgrade. And it's local right now. I haven't pushed it. It's just I now have a branch. So when I make changes here, they are in a branch. Um, so let's take a look at the next step here. So I've, I've done this. So what I need to do is I need to get my file structure looking like this. And this includes some new config files. So I need to get those in there. And you'll see that some of the sources changed. The static has been changed to public, so, and I've moved index HTML in there. So there's a number of things I need to change, and I've sort of pointed them out here in this text. Um, but here are the steps that are going to take me from this, um, this current, um, what I had in master, now I've branched it, to you know, this current CLI2 structure and configs into the CLI3. So that it will run. Um, and you can see, like, in the package JSON here, we still have the scripts for npm run dev and npm run build. So that, that'll change when we get the new package JSON. So let's take a look and step through what we need to do to change this. So first of all, we're going to just delete the config and build directories. So those go away entirely, and we'll just delete those. And we'll delete the config. OK, that was easy. We'll rename static to public. So static has a get keep in it. We'll just rename that to public. Um, we'll move the index HTML and anything else that was in public, you know, into into public anything else from static into public. Well, because we renamed it static, uh, public will contain anything that static had in it. So now we just want to move index HTML into public. OK, so that's what we do for that. We're going to create three files, aliases, config, babel, config, view, config, and aliases, config. What I have, since I have that other branch already updated, I'm going to use that to just drag and drop. But you know, and if you can clone an, an already migrated um, CLI3, you can you can do the same thing. Now, these um, config files um, were created by me to support you know what we're doing in the uh, Watts 4000 class, which is that we're going to want to be building our um, distribution to the docs file, and we are used to using the um, at symbol, like in our source code, when we, we in our current router, we use this at to indicate source. So what this packet, what this alias is, does is it sets it up so that I can continue to use source. So we're going to just bring that into our um, into our uh, the, into this uh, project that we're working on, the migration project. So um, we will, basically, you can see that we're going to make, we're going to take this, which I've already migrated, and I suggest finding something that's already migrated and work with that, and make this one look like it. So we'll bring 
First we'll bring aliases over, and that's just a copy-paste into the root, or just a drag-and-drop. Um, we This Babel config, so we used to use Babel RC, now we're moving to Babel config, so we'll delete Babel RC and move Babel config, and that was given to us by view. And then we have a um, view config. So before we had that config directory, now we've got view config, it goes in the root, and this is where we set up the docs, the build to docs. And um, I also have a way to turn on and off ESLint in there. So those are the config files that we need to get over, Babel, aliases, and view config. And let's see what we do next. So those steps, we're going to delete the docs directory because it will get rebuilt when we, when we um, run the build command, so we might as well just clear that out for now. Um, package lock JSON, that will get recreated when we run npm install, so we'll just get rid of that because that has instructions for the old dependencies, old libraries. Um, then we'll replace the contents of package JSON with the contents in the new specified in this document. So I've given, if you don't drag and drop, you can come down here and just copy and paste these into the files. But it's actually kind of easier to just drag and drop. So I'll get rid of the old package JSON, and then I'll just move this package JSON over. And if you compare what you had before to this, you'll see it changed quite a bit. We don't have the long list of dependencies. Instead, Vue is using these plugins, and they, th I think that is one of their major architectural changes. Um, we're going to create a router.js file and move everything from router index.js into it, and then remove router index. So um, right now, let's see if we can find our router. Source. So, so it's going to be under source. Remember, this is how we would specify. Um, we would specify router was to create a router folder and put an index.js. Now we're just going to create a file called router.js. So I'll create a file, router.js, and I will grab the contents of this router index.js and copy it into router.js, okay, and then I'll delete this router file. So we've just moved that up a level in the directory structure and given it the name router. Um, one of the things that they've changed, and this is more of a convention now, is that instead of, if you have any any components that are routed to. So if you look in the router, you can see I'm, I'm routing to city search, current weather forecast. Any components that are routed to, we want them to be in a views directory and everything else can stay in the components directory. So let's make that move now. Um, so if we go to components, we want to move, well, first of all, we need to create under source, we need to create a views directory. So I'll create a directory called views. So we have this concept that components are not routed to, but anything routed to goes into a views directory. So we can just move that by dragging, we'll move city search in there. We'll move um, current weather in there. So current weather. And we'll move forecast. So these are these are the views. These are the components that are routed to, and now they are going to live in the views directory. And that will mean that we'll have to make some changes in router to look for them in that place. So uh, let's take a look at what's next. So we create the views, and then change the references to the views directory. So let's do that. So in our new router JS file. We're going to find these now in views instead of components. So I'll make that change. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have. Um, I'm going to add a git keep to the views and components just to keep them around. Um, they are sort of conventionally there. It's possible you might not have any views if you're not routing, but 
We'll, we'll just put that in there. So I'll create a file in views called get keep. And that just says, even if the folder is empty, let's keep the, that folder, that directory in our, in our project and get it sent off to uh, GitHub so that it's there as a permanent place in our, because normally in GitHub, if you have an empty directory, it won't even say put it in GitHub. It won't even push it out there. It's got to have something in it. Got to have a file in it. And we'll do the same in here, just just to be consistent here. We'll have just in case we only had components that were routable and we didn't have any, but we still want to just keep this convention going. So we'll add a git keep in here. All right. We updated links in the view, in the views directory. We're going to delete node modules in here. Well, we never installed it. So if you but if you were working on an existing folder where you had an, already installed it, we'd want to delete the node modules before we run npm. And then we, and then after you delete it, we're going to run npm install to get the new ones. So because and that's because we've totally changed package json, which is what npm install is going to install dependencies and dev dependencies. And we don't want any of those old ones around. Those are the ones that can give you the security problems. So I think I'm ready now to run npm install. And that will go out and get all of these dependencies and load them into uh, a folder. I'm going to hide this now. That was my existing CLI 3. Um, so now my if I close this all up, this should look like the picture in here. I should have all of the same structures. Um, you know, it's possible I made a mistake. It's easy to make mistakes. But you can see I've installed NPM zero vulnerabilities. So that looks good instead of seeing those NPM audits come up. Um, so now, to test this, I'm going to run npm run serve instead of dev. And that should open up a dev server. So, yes, that looks good. Um, I like to check the inspector. Now, this is not the fully coded program. This is, I don't have an API key in there, but this is what we have out in, this is just a repo that's ready to be worked on. And that's what I'm trying to do here. If you had your fully outfitted program, this should work for you the way that it would. Because um, you're just migrating, you're, you're not really adding, you're not changing anything. I'm going to change that Paris, Texas though, because um, that is really, for this particular repo, that isn't really correct because they changed that Paris. They changed that so that it doesn't look for states. So that, that's actually better. I'm going to be saving this in SU Web Dev. Um, I can also fix this. This is just sort of an annoying lint problem. It, it still works without this. But what it's wanting is to have some kind of a key for any of these iterators. And so we can just fix that by doing key equals index. And I, there may be some more of those. Let's just look for v4. So I'm going to do a global search for v4 and just take a look. Yeah, so I'm going to just fix all these. And index. And you can look at the v4 docs to read about how you can pull a counter out of a v4, which is an index, and then assign it to a key. And this is a good thing to do. You can actually use that counter in your in your content if you want, but it also gives view a way to keep track really of each of the v4s because sometimes they get nested. And um, when you're working with components, it's nice to be able to uniquely identify. So let's see what else. You can do one here. If you have an ID in your object, you could use that instead of index. Just something that kind of uniquely identifies this. All right. And before, yeah, we already had that there. OK, um, so this should still work. I'm, it's a live server type of thing. 
so oops but it would it doesn't really work because it's not a full application built out it doesn't have an api key or anything like that but that is the migration process so now that we've got that we've got a number of changes we want to do the build so if I go back in here, let's say I don't have a docs directory, I should do the npm run build. And with my config files, it should create a docs directory for me. Now, if you used any other um, libraries that aren't in this package JSON, like if you look at the package JSON, I do have the router, I do have a spinner, but if you and I do have Axios. Maybe you don't need those, you could take them out, but maybe you have more. Uh, you could do an NPM install of any libraries, and you'd probably get an error if you tried to run without picking up any missing libraries. All right, so now we have a docs, and, and you can actually test this with your live server. So this is what would run out there. Yep, so that looks good. Again, it's not gonna really work because I don't have an API key set up. Um, but I am ready to call this Good. So first of all, remember I am working in a branch. I'm working in the CLI3 upgrade branch. So I'm going to do, I'm going to commit this. And this is right now, let's see, we're going to do git add, git commit, um, migrate to CLI3. And when I do a get push, because I haven't pushed it to master yet, I'm going to get this command that I need to set the upstream origin so to origin. So I'm going to just do that. And this will push it up to GitHub at, to the branch. So if I go back and look at this now, um, you'll see that I, I now have two branches. The one that I sort of practiced on, used to help with this video. And then the one that I just created, the upgrade. So now what I need to do is I want to merge this upgrade into master so that this is no longer the old CLI structure and configs, but the new one. And to do that, I think there are some notes in here too that um, after we do all our steps and there's that we need to... Um, do the merge. And did I put that in here? Yes. So we did, that's the checkout. Okay, so what we need to do is we're running locally. So on your local machine, first thing you want to do, you've got the, the new code on your local that you just created. You want to go back to master on your machine. So check out master, and then you're going to merge the branch that you just updated. So let's take a look at status. The, the code we want to merge into master is CLI3 upgrade. So we're going to do get checkout master. And now if I do get status, I'm on my local master. And now I'm going to do the merge. So get merge CLI3 upgrade. Okay. And so what that did is now my master locally has that code merged into it and in fact ready to push okay so when i push this it will update github with my um, with the code that i just merged and the reason we like to work in branches is we can keep, kind of keep those around test them you know sh you know have other people look at them before we so we aren't actually working on our master um, we just we don't move the code into master until we're sure that it's good. Okay, so now if you look out here, I've I've lost my um, my yellow message, the, the security problem. I've got the structure looking the way I want. I've got my config files. Um, let's see if this has moved over to GitHub IO. Yeah, we've got the new um, the new code. Of course, still doesn't work because this is the code that students branch from. All right, so that is the migration process. The, the only thing you have left is you want to clean up your branches locally, so let's do that. All right, uh, let's look at some branch cleanup. So um, I'm going to go to this. This is, this is my test um, project, so this is where I, I'm going to run the get branch command and look at the 
branches that I have over here. So I've got the CLI3 and the master. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that, that I have that other, the project that I've just been working on with the CLI3 upgrade. Oops, get branch. <clears throat> so you can see that this is the one I'm working on. I'm going to kind of leave this alone, but I'm going to go clean up that test one. So the get branch shows me all the branches that I have right here um, locally. And it, in this case, it shows that I am on the CLI3. So this asterisk next to the branch means that if I do get status, that the current branch in this directory is CLI3. Well, what I'm going to want to do, because I want to remove CLI3, is I'm going to check out master. So I'm going to go back to the master branch here. And I am going to um, I am going to now get get branch and see that I'm on master. So now I can delete this local branch. So there's two things that need. If I really want to get rid of that globally or locally and remotely, I need to do two different commands. So you might want to take a look at some of the get scmcom notes on this. Um, so for the remote delete actually we're going to run a, a push. So to do the remote delete, I'll do get push origin dash dash delete server fix. Now you don't have to delete these branches, but it's just kind of good cleanup. You might want to keep it around if you, in case you run into problems and you want to kind of look and maybe you'll have to make some corrections, you know, and then remerge those into your master. But if you want to do the cleanup, this, this is how you would delete the remote. So let's delete that one. I'm going to just grab this command here. And this will take, again, if you look out at my, what I've got here out on SU Web Dev, I've got three branches, master, CLI3, which was my test, and 3LI3 upgrade, which is what I've just actually merged. And I'm going to delete this CLI3. So first, the remote delete. Um, I'll just delete CLI3. So that will take this out of the, that should take it out of GitHub. So if I refresh now, um, you can see it's gone remotely. However, if I do get branch locally, it's still there. So then I'm going to want to do a local branch delete. and. That command is different. So the local branch, I'm just going to say git branch dash d and then the name of the branch. So git branch dash d cli3. And now it will be gone locally. And you, you, you want to get off of it when you're deleting it. That's why I did the git checkout master was to switch me back to master. Okay, it's not fully merged. Okay, that, so if you so this one I didn't merge. Remember, I merged the CLI3 upgrade. So this one is sitting there. I never merged it. It's telling me, are you sure you want to get rid of it because you never used it? And I do because I actually did it in the CLI3 upgrade. And so to do that, you use this capital D, which, is, which means to uh, force it. So ignore the fact that it's got changes in it. And now if I do get branch, all I have is that master.